San Diego Prep Insider, presented by the San Diego Union Tribune. Hello and welcome to another great edition of San Diego Prep Insider. I am so excited to get this one started. I am Ty Hines, joined by the lovely Lisa Lane. And today we're here on Coronado Island, beach in the background. I'm gonna go put my toes in the sand, Lisa. I am, I'm a little worried <laughs> if I'm about to lose you to the beach. Stay here, know, we have a couple of islanders to talk to in just a little bit. Plus, we're gonna reintroduce you to one of the top 50 baseball players in the nation, Avery Tuck. But before we do all that, let's send it on over to Tommy and Abby. Thank you, Ty and Lisa. Tommy and Abby here at Cal State San Marcos for the finals of the premier division of the Lions Tournament. We are, Tommy. Now, this is one of the most prestigious baseball tournaments on the West Coast, and we get to meet a couple guys who are playing in the tournament that are playing in the Pac-12 next year. But before we meet those Pac-12 guys, we got to meet a pair of Steel Canyon Cougars who are going to stay locally next year and play at San Diego State. It's our top recruit. Top recruits is brought to you by San Diego Honda Dealers. All right, hi, my name is Trevor Rowe. I'm a pitcher at uh, Silk Canyon High School, and next year I'll be attending San Diego State University. Uh, I chose San Diego State because I wanted to stay local. It was uh, one of the first schools that offered me, and uh, everything just um, fell into place. My strength in my game would be uh, probably my mental focus. Uh, I have a pitching coach, Dominic Johnson, and uh, one, the main thing that we work on is uh, the, the mental side of the game. There, there's possibly people that are better than you, but just the mental side of it really gets you through the game. My favorite pitch to throw would probably be my uh, fastball. Uh, I like to put people away with it. Um, I've been clocked at 94, I usually sit at around 90. When I'm throwing fast, it's, it's fun just seeing um, all the hard work pay off and just and just seeing O2 count and throwing a fastball by him. It's, it's, a, it's a feeling that is better than any other feeling I've ever had, just burn back and be able to throw the pitch I love. I like to go to the desert a lot with my dad. Uh, my brother's a pro quad rider, and my dad's an ex-pro quad rider, now he does razors. And I go to the desert quite a bit, and uh, uh, my family's been there a lot for me. My brother and my dad have really shown me a lot with, uh, with uh, how, to, how to become a better baseball player just by, by the, how they race and stuff, and just, my brother uh, really pushes his limits with everything, so that's what he's taught me through uh, riding his quad around and putting that into baseball. Great pick, Tommy and Abby, but Ty, I know we wanted to reintroduce everybody to a young man that you had the opportunity to speak to last year at the perfect game, and he is one heck of a baseball player. He is the perfect <laughs> baseball player committed to the perfect university, SDSU, of course, unless he gets drafted into the major leagues in the first round. His name's Avery Tuck. He's a great guy, and he has a lot of big things he wants to accomplish this senior year. Take a look at our top recruit. Hi, I'm Avery Tuck. I play outfield for Steel Canyon High School. I'm committed to San Diego State. When I first got the offer to San Diego State, uh, I was on an unofficial visit, and they sat me down and they talked to me, and they showed me the, um, the offer, and I just looked at my parents, and it was just like, wow. Me being the first in the family to go to college, it means everything. I just want to win. I think that what I can bring to the table with how I can lead the people, how I've been to some things that other kids haven't. I feel as if I can help them get to the point that they need to be. From San Diego, California, Avery Tuck. Playing at Petro Park for a perfect game, it was, it was an honor. Started, starting off, trying out for it, I, was, I wasn't really known. And so being able to play for perfect game and getting my name out there like that, it was, it was an honor. Because all this time, I've, I've been working to try, try and get my name out there. We connected from the whole SDSU thing, and, and since that point on, we just came super close, uh, like a brother from another mother. Trevor Rowe, on the field, he's, a, he's an amazing player. He's a beast on the mound. He's somebody you don't really, you wish you don't have to face. <laughs> uh, off the field, he's, it's a different world. He's a big teddy bear, he's loving. He's a good guy, um, I'd say that I can call him my brother. It's not until Avery gets in the box and you're like, wow, this kid's freaking big and he can take me yard at any time. Actually, I've only faced him one time in practice and that was a pretty heated at that. Um, but he, uh, he struck me out, I admit. He, he has some good speed, he has some good pitches. But I mean, if coach didn't call that, it'd be a uh, 3-2 count right now. And I probably would've hit a bomb off of him. 
Good luck, Trevor and Avery, this year. You probably won't need it with you guys in the lineup because you guys are both phenomenal baseball players. But this spring, there's more than just a couple baseball guys that are we're keeping our eye on, isn't there, Abby? Yep, we're watching a lot of different athletes who are working so hard, and Christian Pedersen is going to introduce us to them. Thank you very much, guys. It's time now for the SDPI watch list where we let you know about some of the athletes that you need to check out. Justin Norwood from Morse. An imposing figure at the net, the 6'1 junior seems to always come up with a key block or kill when the Tigers need it. His productive ways make Morris a serious contender to win a talent-packed City Eastern League. TJ Cacavo from San Marcos. The senior midfielder for the Knights is a scoring machine who can change the momentum of a game anytime he touches the ball. Look for him to play a key role in San Marcos competing for an Avocado West League title this year. For more, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at SD Prep Insider. I miss it, you know, just being here, used to, you know, have this gym packed and stuff. Just to come back and be able just to see my old alumni. Now I'm an alumni of the school. Just feel like I was just in the gym, you know, doing interviews with you a couple years ago. So, I mean, it just feels good just to be here with a lot of my, you know, former uh, teammates and stuff. And, you know, I'm just glad just to be a part of this and you know, just want to give back to my community. What makes your San Diego Honda dealers happy? Putting you in the driver's seat of your favorite Honda. Visit sdhondadealers.com. Hi, my name's Terrence Beckvar, and I'm a point guard at Valley Center High School, and you're watching San Diego Prep Insider. Welcome back to San Diego Prep Insider. It is now time for five questions. I am now joined by Zach Weller, shortstop for Coronado High. Now, Zach, you're headed to Fullerton on a scholarship to play next year, but let's start from the beginning. How long have you been playing baseball, and what really drives you to continue? Um, I've been playing baseball all my life, and I just stuck with it just because I had so much fun with my friends, and yeah, that's just why I kept going. Now, speaking of friends, you're headed to Fullerton, where you will meet some of your friends who you formerly played with. How excited are you for that? I'm really excited. Uh, that was a huge deciding factor for me. Just knowing those guys was really a plus for me and just the high level program that they have and the coaches, I just fell in love with it. Now we're in the middle of the season here. You guys are doing real well. You just beat a big time opponent. But what are your expectations and where do you hope to end the season at? My expectations are really high for the team because I know we got a really good team this year. Uh, a lot of seniors, so it's very promising, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. Mad Daddy, number nine, Zach Weller. And what is it really about this game that you love so much? I mean, you're about to go play four more years at the next level, and then hopefully, I mean, everybody's dream is to play professionally. What is it that you really love about this sport? Uh, it's not really a raw, raw game. I mean, you don't have to be the most physical guy out there, but it's all in the head. It's a thinking man's game, and that's what makes it so fun. And what would you say your best attribute on the field is? Is it your speed? Is it your hitting? What would you say it is? I'll, I'd like to say it's my hitting, but also my arm strength. I don't know. A little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you do a bat flip after you hit a home run? Uh, no. I don't think I'm that good, but I mean, <laughs> it's fun to watch. But we got to get some of the fun back in baseball, so can yeah. we count on you at least once this season oh, yeah, to do a bat flip? I'll do it for you. Very nice. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Lisa, we'll send it over to you. Thank you so much, Ty. I am now joined by senior Jack Harris. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. All right, so this island is absolutely incredible. What are some of the perks of living here in Coronado? Well, you get to be pretty close to the beach. Personally, I live uh, just a few blocks away, so um, I get to go down there, you know, before school sometimes, body surf. 
Um, another fun thing is, I mean, I've been friends with most of my friends for years and years. Um, and, you know, you get to build a lot of relationships with a lot of people that, you know, will probably last a long time. So, yeah, I enjoy that. Now, you're a senior this year. You have the honor of being captain. What are some of the things you hope to accomplish before you leave Coronado High School? Uh, well, I want to do something that we haven't done uh, my time here. I want to win the league, first of all, and hopefully that will carry on into uh, playoffs. And, you know, as every team, the goal is to win CIF championship. And, uh, yeah, I hope to play USD this uh, summer. Now, is there a game on the schedule that you look forward to most every year? Um, this year, senior day uh, against Christian. It's going to be fun. It's always a team that we have to grind it out against. So, uh, yeah, they're our rival, and uh, hopefully we come out on top this year. Now, I know you have a couple offers to different universities. Do you think you're going to continue to play baseball at the next level, or what's going into your decision-making process? Uh, personally, education comes first. Um, I know my mom likes to hear that, but uh, um, I'd love to carry the dream and be able to play baseball at the next level. But like I said, education comes first, and if I get the opportunity to play baseball, I'm going to take it. Um, but I just want to set myself up for 40 years, not four years. So we'll see. Go ahead, Chris. And just lastly, does Coronado have a team motto, something you guys are preaching throughout the season? Um, I would say that just grinding, grinding and grinding and grinding. Um, like I said, we're not a team that has two or three guys that's going to it, win it all for us. Um, we have nine guys who are on the field and nine guys who are in the lineup who, you know, put in their all every day, every practice, every game. So that's sort of just what we live by this season. Well, thank you so much for your time and best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Tommy and Abby, I'll send it on over to you. Thank you, Ty and Lisa. I'm here with Matt Ornelia from Vista. Matt, you're going to Utah next year, so why Utah? Uh, I've always wanted to play in a big time college baseball school, then the Pac-12. I visited there last October and I felt it was the right fit for me. Oh, hey. And this is going to be the first year you've known where you're going to go. Last year you're still kind of trying to figure it out. So what's gonna be, what has it been like so far this year, knowing where you're going to go, kind of the pressure of that's off your shoulder? Uh, you don't really have to worry about who's watching you in the stands, what college is there. Like, you just got to play your game, hopefully you do good. Maybe get some pro scouts to look at you, but you don't really got to worry about the colleges anymore. So you're here at the Lions tournament right now. You're about to play the semifinals, potentially playing in the finals. So what's it like to get this far in a prestigious tournament like the Lions tournament? Uh, it's super fun. The last time we played in this tournament, we got this far with my freshman year. Uh, super fun. We played in big games, so I know we can get this going. So it should be fun. All right, before we toss it to Abby, I got to ask you one more question. You got a lot of accessories going on. Can you can you explain the whole accessory entourage? You got the nice socks, the, you got the armband, you got the clock. Can you just go through your your, your accessories. Uh, I got the got the flag armband, got the white arm sleeve, got the glasses. You got to look good to play good. How many necklaces? Uh, I got two necklaces on right now. I got gold, silver. Got to look good. <laughs> what happens if you don't wear all the same accessories? Um, if I don't do good with a certain pair of, say, I don't do good with gloves. I went over four yesterday with some new pair of gloves. Those are gone. I need to do good with the ones I did good with, wear them, and hopefully brings you good luck again. So even if there's a giant hole in it, you still got to wear it, right? Yeah, exactly. Till, till you're not doing good no more with them. Good juju. Nice. Got to look good to play good, right, guys? Abby, who do you have? Thank you, Tommy. I have Kyle Stowers here. And Kyle, let's start with this. You've been committed for a while, but you are going to Stanford to play baseball. Now, what's it like knowing that you're playing at the next level? Uh, it's really exciting. Um, it's just a, a blessing to be able to get that opportunity uh, to play against the best players in the nation in the Pac-12 will be uh, really fun. There's no breaks uh, in that conference, so every week's going to be a tough team, and it's going to be really exciting. Here we go, boy! Speaking of no breaks, you didn't really have one in high school because you're a two-sport athlete, basketball and baseball. Was there anything that you learned from basketball that has helped you with your career with baseball? Um, it, you know, the break from baseball uh, the, for like four months really helped me just want to get back out on the field. Uh, it just makes me enjoy baseball more um, and not uh, just so focused on uh, like doing, having to do good and just instead enjoying being out on the field and uh, being able to play a game. And then also the conditioning helps too. Oh boy! Uh, you're going to be busy in college, obviously, with baseball, but you think you'll get any pickup games in basketball or do intramurals or anything like that? Uh, we'll see what the coaches think about that. <laughs> uh, I hope so. I mean, I love just playing basketball. Uh, playing uh, pickup games is just really fun, so we'll see. Yeah. Now, you guys are going to the championships at the Lions tournament right now. You play in a couple hours. How are you feeling? What are you looking forward to? What are you going to do to help your team win? Uh, you know, at this point, it's like our fifth game of the week, so we're... We're a little low on pitching, so uh, we're just going to go inning by inning, just try to put up some runs and uh, see what happens, just have some fun. 
Well, good luck with that. You guys are going to do great. Thank you again for joining us. And Maddie, let's see what you have going on at College Bound. We caught up with the Point Loma High School lacrosse team and met a couple of girls who know not all the action is about what's on the field, but in the classroom as well. Check out and see who's on our SDPI College Bound. College Bound is brought to you by Tory Pines Bank. Lisa Regula from Point Loma. This senior team captain has been on the varsity lacrosse team for the past three years. When she's not on the field, you can catch her on the basketball court, where she has been on the varsity team for the past four years. If that wasn't enough, Lisa is also a part of her school's marching band. She currently has a 4.31 GPA and has been accepted to Johns Hopkins University, where she plans to study biochemistry. Nicole Oliveira from Point Loma. This senior has been on varsity for the past three years and is also their team's captain. When she's not on the field scoring goals, you can catch her in the marching band where she is the president of the band program. Nicole has started her own business called Cause for Paws Bakery where she donates supplies for dogs to homeless people. She currently has a 4.21 GPA and hopes to attend University of Wisconsin, UC Davis or UCLA and plans to study animal behavior and animal-human interaction. Emily Daly from Point Loma. Emily has been on the varsity lacrosse team all four years of her high school career. She is also a part of the California Scholarship Federation. Emily has started her own club at school called Fostering Smiles, where they go to foster care centers and help make care packages for foster children. She currently has a 4.23 GPA and has been accepted to UC Davis and plans to study neuroscience. <laughs> Rule 600 is a really important rule in the San Diego section and throughout California that student athletes who are playing a sport cannot play on an outside team in that same sport during their high school season. In San Diego, our rule goes even further than that, that students cannot practice or try out for outside teams during their high school season of sport. Really important to remember, it's a strong penalty when, when this is violated, teams get taken out of the playoffs, nobody likes that. No student should play on an outside team in the same sport during the same season that they're playing at a high school sport. Rona Bulldogs! Do you follow high school sports? The San Diego Union Tribune's free UT Preps app is the go-to source for your favorite high school sports teams. Get schedules, scores, standings, news, and more right on your phone. Follow your favorite high school team by sport. Share photos and videos right from the game. See rosters and player profiles complete with game-by-game -game statistics and receive push notifications for game updates. Don't miss any of the action at Oceanside, Chula Vista, Torrey Pines, and many more San Diego schools. Download the free UT Preps app on Google Play or the Apple App Store. 308! 17. Time to switch to one hand. You ready, Ty? Oh, oh nice. Uh, Tommy, Ty, what are you guys doing? Everyone knows mascots are buffs. We're making this new mascot workout video with the Bronco. Um, uh huh. You guys look ridiculous. Cabo. <laughs> Vegas. Beach Bob coming up. Cabo. Oh, yeah. Keep watching San Diego Prep Insider on Fox Sports San Diego. What makes your San Diego Honda dealers happy? Putting you in the driver's seat of your favorite Honda. Always sunny. Visit sdhondadealers.com. Hi, I'm Ariana Huffman. And I'm Kim Rose. And, and we're, we're from, from Claremont, Claremont High School, School Softball, and, and you're watching San Diego, Diego Prep Insider. Welcome back to San Diego Prep Insider. Now, sports are more than just about the wins and losses. It's about the joy and how much it brings people together. That's right, Abby, and that's why we're about to introduce you to a league that a lot of people didn't even know existed where that could not be any truer. Building Characters brought to you by Torrey Pines Bank. While CF San Diego held its basketball championships at Jenny Craig Pavilion this winter, over at Alliant International University, there was another championship game going on for CAFSA Sports League. There are trophies handed out at the end of the Caps' season, however, the real prize is just being able to play. 
We're a, a collection of uh, 13 schools ar around San Diego County. All these schools are students who have special needs. Predominantly, they have a lot of behavioral and learning challenges. And what what's great about these schools uh, serve these students. They're really to turn them around, make them good citizens, you know, and you know, really productive members of society. When we started. 21 years ago, I think we were like four schools. There's definitely a, a really a need for this this type of league out there, so we're really happy we can go. School administrators have seen the benefits of having their students compete in athletics. I think for us with kids with special needs, they often are excluded in some regular sports, so here they believe they, they learn to be part of a team, um, they know if they try hard, they can't give up if they don't win. Um, and then they, that goes translate to the classroom. You'll hear them say, hey, we can do it. We have to get ready for Friday. Let's all have good behavior. Let's get our work done. So it's, it really translates for more than one skill. Parents have also noticed how sports have improved their child's lives. My son Daniel is 16 years old. He's been playing basketball for two years. It's enriched his life. It's given him confidence. Um, he's a new person. He loves it. He loves it. He's more confident in all what he does. I would say having a league like this is hugely important for the kids. Again, it promotes this camaraderie between the students and also a sense of sort of normalcy, you know? I mean, these kids want to play sports. They want to compete. They want to be involved. They want to feel and do like all kids do when they're in high school or junior high school. It's really important and it's so moving. I love it. One, two, three, tell You don't need to hear it from the adults to find out how successful Capsis has been. You just talk to the kids who are having a ball. My favorite thing about sport is I get to hang out with my friends. Besides, everyone on the team is my friend. Um, it teaches us to work hard to get our work done so we can come out and play on Fridays. Uh, I think a lot of people here always are working hard on Thursdays to get their work done right before Friday, anything that they didn't make up. And I think that's a really good thing that we have in place to be able to have our work uh, correlate and correspond to our athletics. Our whole team busted their butts to get their grades up to be able to come to the game. And this is the first time that we had our whole team at a game all year, and everyone showed dedication and hard work. While there are always winners and losers in competition, Bob Meehan knows that Capsis is a victory for all of its participants because of the way it shapes its athletes' future. Great game! Being kids out there who really just experience a lot of school failure, and then they come out here and they, you give an avenue where they can be successful. You, you look at where this student was, you know, a year ago or two years ago, now you see them just being not only excelling here on the, on, the, on the field, on the court, but just excelling in life. Usually for our blast from the past, we go to a faraway campus to revisit San Diego athletes, but this one is a little bit different, Tommy. That's right, this time we stayed locally at San Diego State's Trey Kell, formerly of St. Augustine, and he has not gotten over that Cathedral Catholic rivalry. Well, I'm a, I'm a Saints guy, so you know I came here hoping Saints would win, but they came up a little short, Cathedral played a good game, uh, it was a great atmosphere, this reminds me of my high school days, so it was a good game. Now you were over in the cathedral section, so I'm sure you had some love over on that side, right? Uh, it's just my teammate, Nisha. He, he came here, and I came here with him, so we decided to sit over there. I'm still over there talking mess about my team, so uh, it's just a fun game, great atmosphere, and uh, just reminds me about my days. What What do you miss about this rivalry? Uh, just this right here, I mean, all everyone comes out. I mean, all the Saints parents, the Saints students. Then the Cathedral students, I mean, it's just a fun experience. I mean, one, one of the best experiences in, in San Diego to me, so I'm just glad I was a part of it. Now coming out here, I'm sure you come back and you talk to the players, or if you could talk to them right now, what advice would you give them? Uh, I mean, I know it's cliche, but just have fun with it. I mean, it goes by real fast, like everyone says. I mean, it's not a joke, it really does. In the blink of an eye, you'll be a senior, or you'll be a last season, so just have fun. And lastly, one of the biggest rivalries really in Southern California. I'm sure a lot of nerves for the players involved, but did you have any nerves coming out here tonight and watching it? Uh, not really. I mean, it's just like what players have, you know, it's excitement, you're ready to go, big game. So, I mean, for them, it's a lot of preparation. And for me, I'm just excited to see, uh, see the growth that has come from my, my, my school so, from when I was there.
Abbey. Spring is officially sprung, which means the sun is out. It's hotter. I'm getting warm just standing here. <laughs> So hot, and that's why it is a perfect time to dive into game day, which is at a swim meet. Well, hello, and welcome to another game day. Tommy, we're out here hanging out with Patrick Henry because they hit us up on the Twitter. Yep, so just a reminder, if you tweet at us, right in our Facebook, Check us out on Instagram. We will show up to whatever you want us to. And we'll make it happen. So today we're going to learn a little bit about water polo. It is game day. Well, we'll talk. you're going to have to learn a lot because this is actually swimming. We're going to learn about swim we're today. Learn about I like swimming. that. I like swim. I like swim. Let's learn about some swim and let's do some game day. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Swim. I'm here with Carlson Temple, who just won the 200 individual medley. Carlson, how did it feel out there? Uh, I felt good. Felt good. Felt good. Did you? When did you know you had it? Um, at the backstroke, because I know I'm good at breaststroke. So once I was ahead, I felt like I got had it in the back. So we're kind of new to swimming. We noticed Coach was yelling, "Shoot and reach." What was he? What does that mean? Uh, well, shoots to move your arms forward quicker, and reaches to keep them out there longer. What, what got you into swimming, and why do you like it so much? Um, I got into swimming just because my sister did it and she inspired me to get in so I started swimming and I just like the competitiveness and how like you get to race each other. Alright guys, I'm joined by Lily Keck. First off, we got to go back to water polo because today you're covering swim but I just found out that you played in the Junior Olympics, you were one of two girls on the guys team, this is how good you are. What was that experience like? Well, it was pretty fun. Um, it, I had just started playing, so it was pretty shocking that I made the team to go. And then I'm still pretty close with a lot of the boys. They go to high school with them now, and we still play on the same club. It was fun. What would you say the atmosphere is like when you're up there, you're on the block, you're getting ready to jump into the water? What's it like? What's going through your mind? Can you hear the fans, your parents, anybody? So I normally hear like the people that are around me, so I just did a relay and I heard my uh, relay mates and they were cheering me on, so that was nice. And sometimes you can kind of hear the fans cheering when you have like a breath, but mostly you're just kind of by yourself. You are a star. We all are going to keep an eye on you, so you got to bring home another medal for your team this year, okay? Okay, I'll try. Tommy, let's send it over to you. So, just like we told you earlier, please tweet at us at SC Prep Insider, right on our Facebook, or check us on Instagram, and tell us where we need to be, what game we need to be covering, and we will show up just like we did today. We are out for game day. Well, it's been another incredible episode of San Diego Prep Insider and, of course, an amazing day out here in Coronado. Ty, you might actually make it to the beach after all. You know, I was so excited that we moved over here because we got that beautiful bay behind us. So I am going to make it to the beach. But before I do that, on behalf of Tommy, Abby, the lovely Lisa Lane, and myself, we want to thank you for tuning into this episode, and we'll see you next time.